Have you ever been caught in a storm? I'm talking like a crazy, like a big storm, huge snowstorm or huge rainstorm. I remember growing up, I grew up in Western New York and it would snow all the time. When I was learning to drive, I was 16. And I remember one time I got caught in a massive snow squall. They call them squalls because they're like hawks. They swoop in out of nowhere, squall. And then you're just stuck in it and you have to just drive through it because that's all you can do. I remember I was driving, I could not see 10 feet in front of me. It was like that moment from Star Wars where they're like jumping into hyperspeed and everything's like flying past you. It was like that, except it was me driving like 20 miles an hour with my four ways on. It was terrifying. It can be really scary to be caught in a storm sometimes. But when you're in a storm, it reminds you of a simple and amazing truth about God. God created all of nature and he reveals his power through it. God chooses whether the sun will shine. And if he wanted it to stop shining, he could make that choice. If he wanted to dry up the oceans, he could do that. All of creation points to God's glory and all of creation surrenders to his will. And so today we're gonna talk about a song that actually reveals this to us and talks about it in a beautiful, beautiful way. And the song's called, So Will I. God of creation, there at the start before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship, so will I You see, the first part of this song displays what is a miracle. God speaking something out of nothing. There was nothing, and our brains can't even conceptualize this because our brains are something, and so we have a hard time. What is nothing? We don't know. But God spoke something out of nothing, and the universe began. Continue on. Let's check out the bridge together. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your grace, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. Oh, if the sun See, I love these lyrics because they remind us of a very, very important point. It's that everything in creation is made to bring glory to God. It's all for his glory. In fact, check out what David says in Psalm 19. He says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. You see, everything in creation was made to bring glory to God. Every flower petal, every child that you see, every waterfall, every star in the sky, every atom that makes up the chair I'm sitting in all exists to bring glory to God. But not only does everything exist for his glory, everything chooses to surrender to his will. In fact, let's continue on with the lyrics. In God of salvation, you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, 
A hundred billion failures disappear Where you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave behind you so will I I can see your heart and everything you've done Every part designed in a way See, the difference between the rest of creation and us is that we have a choice as to whether we'll follow God and do what he thinks is best or not. You see, God, God's not a taskmaster. He's not going to force us to love him. He won't force us to follow him. We have free will. We have to make a choice to choose to surrender. And, and when we choose to surrender to God, we're just saying that he knows what's best, that his way is best. And guys, it is incredible what happens when we make that choice to surrender. God will do incredible things in us. He can, he can give us forgiveness in places we never thought was possible. He'll heal wounds in us that we never thought could happen. He'll begin to change our hearts and the way that we see other people. God will do amazing things in us when we choose to surrender. But he also wants to do amazing things through us when we surrender. He'll use us to forgive others. He'll use us to love other people, treat other people with respect and kindness that we could not do on our own. He'll use us to be vessels of mercy and grace to other people. But maybe most importantly, when we choose to surrender, we're actually following Jesus' example. Check this out. Philippians 2. This is what Jesus does. It says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And here's where it gets really good. Check this out. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was with God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. And he died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name that is above every other name. And that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God of God the Father. You see, surrender is just humbling ourselves to God's will for us in the same way that Jesus did. And when we do this, we live out God's plan for our lives. The big idea is that God does amazing things when we surrender to him. He does amazing things in us and through us. This is the example that Jesus set out for us. It's what we're meant to do. And when we do this, we join with all of creation, proclaiming the majesty of God, bringing glory to his name. And so the question really is, what is it going to look like for you to do it? Where in your life do you need to say, so will I? Where in your life do you need to lay some things down, lay yourself down to bring glory to God? 